Hello everybody. How are you doing? Jake Johnson here with Untethered. Ready to have a good time tonight. Just waiting for some folks to come in, see what's going on. You tell me what you want to hear tonight. What you want to talk about. Let's get into it. Let's get weird. Let's just babble all night long. Why not? Sounds like a fun thing to do to me. I'm here in the midst of the fog. Wearing my red. Been watching the world fall apart simultaneously and come back together. It's quite an interesting thing. I forgot to do something. I'm fixing it, don't worry. I fixed it. it. It's good to see you. Good to be here. In a little while, I'm going to play some music. Do some talking. Just kind of waiting for the folks to come in. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Tip the musician by following one of the links below or paypal.me slash Jake Johnson Band. Buy a t-shirt. Let's get crazy. Get one of those Rebel Hell t-shirts. They're going like hotcakes. I got my beautiful guitar here. This joker is uh, something else. It's part mahogany and part fiberglass. And it's got a great sound, see? It's a lot of sound for a thin little guitar. This guitar has been with me on many stages, both famous and, you know, backwater. It doesn't know the difference. It rocks either way. Getting by, nine kids and a wife. I have been a working man, dang near all my life. I'm gonna keep on working. Come Monday morning, I'm gonna ride back with my crew. Yeah, I drink my beer in a tavern and sing a little bit of these working man blues. one hand we got rock and roll and on the other hand we got an old man that can't remember lyrics that's a recipe for disaster I love it mm. 
How about a little of this? Pow. Hmm. happening buddy you built a grow out tank don't drink the hydroxychloroquine it's not the same thing it's good for koi fish ponds but it's not good for the you know what not good for the beer bug virus Oh, it's a good day to be alive. How you doing, man? You had a good week? People are in and out. I have no idea what's going on. YouTube doesn't seem to be working properly, so if you're in the chat, shout out and say hello. Boom shakalaka. We're all about partying up in here. Older. I long for the young boy ways with a girl. 
girl like you With a girl like you Say come on baby do some living close and now See what we can do Come on and make it hurt so good Come on baby make it hurt so good Sometimes love don't feel like it should Make it hurt so good Attention, getting crazy. When are you may think I'm foolish by the foolish things I do? You may wonder how come I love you when you get on my nerves like you do. When I honey, you normally bug me. There ain't no secret about that. show you where it's at well now I don't need you for your money uh uh I got plenty of that I do you in your pink Cadillac cause there was seats riding in the back cruising down the streets waving to the girl leaving out of sight spending my money on a Saturday night I just wonder if you blow me in the back of your pants Temptations always come along There's always somebody tempting Somebody fooling Somebody doing something wrong When I they tempt you with silver And they tempt you with gold And they tempt you with the pleasure That the flesh the soul they hold They say that he took it at them with an apple a little Bruce Springsteen and some John Cougar Mellencamp for you. Well, what's she doing in South Carolina? Got to get that lady back to the house. Uh-oh. There we go.
Yeah. All right. Let's see if anybody else has joined us. Nope, just us. I tell the dogs I said hello. Skinner here in a minute. <laughs> Re oh, redecorated. I thought that said relocated. A very tiny text. I was going to say, why would you want to relocate it from anywhere but the beach? Relocate it to where? But it's being redecorated. Well, when it gets where you're taking it, it'll look nice. How's the weather down there in those parts of the world? It's been raining all week long up here. I have a friend that I help take care of occasionally. And uh, I go out and run errands and whatnot. And uh, the last time I did that, I got caught in the rain on my Harley. And by the time I got back, I was one soaked little puppy. Which is why I'm hoarse today. If you can hear it in my voice, it's a little crackly. More so than usual. Mm. <coughs> well, send me pictures when you get it redecorated. I'd like to see what the place looks like. Looks like we're going to have a really slow day today because there's just us and you're not even showing up in the uh, analytics. I don't even know if you're here or not. But I've seen you say a couple of things, so I know at least you're popping in and out. Just went all breezy. Well, if nothing else, it's a good Tuesday home, right? Hmm. Matter of fact, I think it's raining right now. I heard a loud crack a few minutes ago. It sounded like somebody hit the side of the building. I don't know what it was. Gunshot, backfire, lightning strike. I have no idea, but it was loud. It scared me. I jumped about that high. Pulled out my gun and ran around looking down out of the windows. See if there was somebody trying to attack us. When it's loud enough to make you do that, it's pretty loud. I know you're listening, buddy, and I appreciate that. It means a lot to me. But what I'm saying is, is YouTube is not telling me who's here. So I don't know if there's anybody here or not. It's just us, maybe. I don't know if the uh, the alert went out, you know, the notification. I have no idea. I sent it, put it on Facebook and all that. So we'll see. The reason I missed Wednesday is I was down in the weather. Due to being out in the rain, I kind of got a cold. And because of the you-know-what going around, I wanted to nurse myself back to health and not uh, catch anything I didn't want to have. So, that's why I didn't show up Wednesday. But I'm here, I'm back, and I'm not going anywhere.
be far away Feel the wind blow Outside my door Means I'm leaving my woman My baby's gone with the wind. Train I don't know which way I'm going. Just wanna be left alone. This train ends. Lord calls me. If you know the word Tuesday's gone with the wind Tuesday's gone with the wind My baby's gone My baby's gone with the wind. My baby's You see, she's got to be free, just wants to be left alone. When my train ends, I'll die again.
Here's a little Leonard Skinner just off the bat. I'm on TV. Yeah, that's the idea. The last time I was on TV, it broke. But on. Let's see what we got going on now. Well, I'm just not even gonna look at YouTube then. It ain't telling me nothing anyway. What's been bad the past week? Are you having troubles at home? Are you talking about the weather? You got the Herpes Simplex 5s? it is that's all right though 
I got my trippy light show behind me. I can feel the room with smoke, build a fire, play on my grand piano, it don't matter. What you think about that? Does that look all right from your end? Yeah, I might have called it short tonight, buddy. I'm about to lose my voice. What's that to say? Let's see what we can do. We can do one more. What would you like to hear? It's odd. You've never seen a concert before? This is like uh, normal stuff for me. It's the shirt and the hat. What's wrong with the shirt and the hat? You want me to be naked? Are you telling me you don't like the color red? Is that what's going on here? I know any Grateful Dead or not. I probably do, but I don't know what it is. Hmm. Trying to think. It's not really in my wheelhouse, you know. Uh, about Almond Brothers is about as close as I get into that, and I do very little of that. I see. What you're saying is purple and red don't look good together. I tell you what I'll do though, I will learn some Grateful Dead for just for you because that's one hole in my repertoire and I don't have anything to fill it, so. I know a lot of people do like the Grateful Dead. Oh, is I don't guess Crosby, Stills, and Nash would come close to filling that. What about Almond Brothers? Or Thin Lizzy. <laughs> nah, that's probably on the other side of the spectrum. Hmm.
That's hard to do by yourself. I took all his money. It was a pretty penny. I took all his money and I brought it home to Molly. She swore she loved me. Never would she leave me. But the devil take that woman. You know that she tricked me easy. Ring, dama, do, dama, da. What for my daddy, oh? What for my daddy, oh? There's whiskey in the jar, oh. did Dr. Hook last time I was here. Put 
put it in his hand and she wiggled and she giggled and she said, hey, hey, I'm getting ready for my wedding day. Then old handsome Jack said, peace out, Marie. You too damn ugly for a rich boy like me. Then Marie started trembling and her eyes started flashing. Her body started shaking and her fangs started gnashing and it was yow. What have I got in? Hmm. Folk music. January's always bitter. Oh, this one be. The wind ain't quit for weeks now The drifts are ten feet tall I've been all night driving heifers Closer in the lower I just can't help but think about All the ones the wolves pulled down Charlie Barton and his family Stopped in to say goodbye Said the bank has taken over The last few years have been too dry And I promised that I'd visit When they found a place in town And I just can't Think about the ones the wolves pulled down. Long 
There's some modern day folk music for you right there. <clears throat> Louisiana. I don't know that one. Oh, Louisiana, won't you cry for me? I don't know how to play the song, but that's all right with me. Oh, Susanna, won't you cry for me? Stuck in Louisiana and you don't know where to be. That's the best I can do for you. Hey, Mr. Mercer, good to see you. We're doing fine. Oh, Susanna. Here's a folk song for you. There you go. 
That's a Jake Johnson song right there, just for Mr. Mercer. Last time we were together, we talked about the flood and what happened and how that occurred. So what we didn't do is end it. So as you know, big boat was built, filled, flood waters came, destroyed the whole earth. Boat floated for about 60 days. They let loose a dove, dove didn't come back. A few days later, they let loose another dove, dove didn't come back. On the third try, they let loose a raven, and the bird came back with a uh, twig in its mouth, signifying that there was dry land somewhere. So that was a sign that all good things are coming. The boat lands somewhere in the mountains of Ararat. Notice I said mountains of Ararat, not the Mount Ararat, because there's a large mountain, Ararat, and then there are several adjacent mountains that are the mountains of Ararat. They all have different names and I don't know what they are and I don't care, but in those mountains is where the ark landed. That town, there's a town there today and I can't tell you what the name of it is, but I can tell you what it translates to because I don't speak that language and I can't remember how they pronounced it, but it translates to the eight people that came down from the mountains. It's the name of the town that's there today. And in that town, you can find anchor stones with crosses carved in them. Obviously, that was done at a later time uh, when people would come to pilgrimage at that area. And uh, so there's, there's eight crosses carved into these anchor stones that are massive. They're bigger than any ship would ever need. And you can see them today. They even built a visitor center, to, uh, visitor center there. I can talk. I'm not having a stroke. They even built a visitor center there. Right before a war broke out, they were planning on opening the place up and, uh, you know, having tourists come and check this place out. Well, what had happened was, somewhere in the 60s, there was an earthquake in Turkey, where these mountains are, and it uncovered uh, an outcrop. And the land kind of fell away from the outcrop. And what the outcrop was, was this gigantic boat-shaped thing in the middle of a field. And they thought, well, man, that looks an awful lot like a boat. So they went out and they measured it. Sure enough, it's the exact measurements. If you were to take a boat and then have the hull fall apart like this, so give or take a few feet on either side, it is the exact measurements of what the Bible says the ark is, both length and width and breadth and height. You know, three stories, three and a half stories tall. Uh, 550 feet by 80 something feet something like that I don't know what it translates to in you know cubits but it's about that in feet which coincidentally is the exact same measurements that they use to build naval ships today because it's the best 
you know, it's like six to one is the ratio. It's the best way to build a ship to give it the most stability in water. It just is. So that's the way they do it today. They did it that way back then too. Now, they found this boat. Uh, you can go look it up if you want to. I would suggest looking up the the uh, the guy Ron Wyatt, W-Y-A-T-T. -T. He's the guy that quasi discovered it. He's the guy that did some investigating in it anyway. And he's got the most information on the internet about it. So. Obviously, there's people that say it's not Noah's Ark, it can't be Noah's Ark, blah, 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 blah. However, it's in the right place, it's the right size, and everything around it screams that this is where eight people got off of a boat and started a new life. So, what happened then? So, these people get off the boat. Let me make one clarification. There were not eight people running an ark full of animals. There were eight people from one family eight Adamic people, eight people of one bloodline. That's Noah, his three sons, and their three wives. But there were also two of every flesh clean, and seven of every flesh unclean, and two of everything male and female, all of which can be figured out at your leisure. But that includes people. So there were two of every race of people also. So there's lots of people on the, the ark. But there were eight people from one family, the family the Bible's talking about. <laughs> so they get off the boat, they start building houses and, you know, trying to rebuild civilization right there in that little area. But then they decide they're going to spread out and carry life in every direction. So Ham, Shem, and Japheth are the three sons of Noah. Ham went up into Africa and took his family that way. Japheth went over the Caucasus Mountains and went into England and in that direction. And Shem went east into China and took his family into that direction. And Noah went home, which is straight down back to Egypt. So they all went in their own separate directions and thus and so years and years later, following the bottleneck of the, the, the uh, arc of how civilization flies, we're now right at 7 billion people on the planet. And if you do the math, it works out. I know it sounds crazy, but I've done the math and it does work out. There is a bottleneck. You can't get much more than that. But from that long ago, which would be about 4,500 years ago to now, you can reasonably do eight, 8 billion people. So here we are. Well, after the flood, obviously, they started rebuilding civilization again. Noah went home, and all the people came with him. And if you'll, if you'll look at a map, find Egypt, you'll see that little... It's like a... Egypt is on this side of this sea, and there's two little rivers that go up right up into Africa and so forth. On this side is Arabia, and on this side is Egypt. Africa's above. Turkey is over here to the right side of that map. If you'll draw a line from Turkey down to Egypt and then draw down that Nile River, the Dead Sea and all that straight down, you'll notice that on one side of that line you'll have uh, Egypt and all of that stuff and on the other side of that line you'll have uh, Mesopotamia and, and Ur and all of that over here. So you can see a clear division of these ancient peoples, how they sp spread out. And they kind of go out in two directions from those major cities where all the stonework and, and pyramids and ziggurats and all are. One of these places, which is now modern day Iraq, was called Shamir. Let me see if I got that right. Shinar, excuse me, which is modern day Iraq, is also known as Babylonia. And sometime after the flood, there was a city constructed there, and it talks about it in Genesis 11 1 through 11 9 as a good description of that area. Uh, there's a lot of people there, 
This is probably a thousand years after the flood. I don't know. I'm just guessing how many years, but there they are. And they have a king, and his name is Nebuchadnezzar. He also has another name, and that name is Nimrod. That name is given to him by his own people. That's where we get our name Nimrod from when we're talking about dumb people because they do dumb things. But that was it. that's the same guy. Nebuchadnezzar and Nimrod are the same person. Well, this guy was rebellious against God. He didn't follow the... Apparently, he didn't notice the big flood that happened not too long ago and decided he was going to reach his own way into heaven. He wasn't going to wait for no God. So he started building this big tower. Now, there's a lot of things said about the Tower of Babel. They have found its base in modern-day Iraq, and before Saddam Hussein was killed, he was actually refurbishing it. He was beginning doing the the beginning steps of refurbishing it. He even had bricks made with his face and the name Nebuchadnezzar written on it because he believed he was a direct descendant of Nebuchadnezzar or Nimrod. He believed he was the modern day Nimrod and he was gonna rebuild the Tower of Babel. That didn't work out for him. He ended up hanging from a rope instead. Similarly, it did not work out for Nimrod when he built the Tower of Babel. One of the things that was said about the Tower of Babel that it was so big that it would take a year to work your way from the bottom to the top. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's the legend that's been touted. And also another thing they said about it was that it took so much effort to build this thing that if a person fell off of it, you would just keep on working. You wouldn't even think about it. But if you dropped a brick off of it, you would mourn the brick. Like you would mourn the passing of that brick because it took so much effort to get it up to where it was. These are uh, legends that come from that part of the world, so who knows the efficacy of them, but they have been said. Now, this tower was built, the purpose of its building was to reach into heaven. That was what the guy's thinking was. He was going to show up in heaven and show God who the man was. He was going to come from earth into heaven. And I don't need no God. I'm going to build me a tower and get to heaven myself, and then I might even try to take over. <laughs> the last time that was attempted, it didn't work out well for that guy either. His name was Lucifer. Now, God looked down and he saw man building these towers. And he said that the imaginations of men, if they could do this, there's nothing they couldn't do. They're only limited by their imaginations. So he had to do something to stop this and to send a signal. This isn't something I like. So he destroyed the tower down to its base. Just knocked it right on over. And then he confounded all the people by changing their tongue. See, at one time everybody spoke the same language or dialects of the same language. But he confused the tongue and he scattered people all over the world. And this is the explanation of where all of the languages come from and all of the different ways that language. There's seven basic language structures but there's thousands of each dialects of each basic structure you got latin and the romantic languages and you've got uh, 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 russian and the slavic languages and so forth and so on now nimrod was a bad dude he did some bad things and he was rebellious against god his sons were also rebellious against God and they have their own stories and it seems to me that every time somebody does not do what they're supposed to do they end up getting struck down and every time they do what they're told they win whatever battle they're fighting that's just a, a way of looking at it but uh, that's the story of the Tower of Babel and that happened right after the flood and next time we get into something, we're going to get into what happened right after that, which is the setting up of kingdoms and the kings and how that fits into the king's lists of the Roman mythologies and, and the uh, Greek mythologies and how those things tie together, and along with the Muslim mythologies and how all of these things, the Hopi Indians and the South Americans and the people in Australia and the Dogons in Africa, how they all fit together. And if you look at it, if you step back from your religion or from your little way of thinking, 
and you look at everything, you'll realize that all of it is little pieces, little slivers of the same story. There's something like 2,000, depending on who you listen to, which numbers you listen to, there's like 2,000 independent, not knowing to each other exists stories about the deluge, the flood. Because it happened, and everybody knew about it, and everybody wrote it down in their own way, in their own perspective, but they wrote it down. The most famous of these is uh, the story of Gilgamesh, the Epic of Gilgamesh, and where he claimed to have been one of the few who survived the flood. Well, how he came about that, I don't know. But in that same vein, there are lists of all the kings that go back from the beginning to the flood and what happened after the flood. And Egypt is one of those things. If you uh, study ancient Egypt, Egyptology, you'll notice right off the bat that the people who are in charge of Egyptology are saying things that don't make any sense compared to what you see with your own eyes. For example, that the pyramids were tombs. They were not tombs. There has never been a body ever found in a pyramid, ever. There's never been, except for that box that's in the Great Pyramid, which is a box which is five feet in length. It's not long enough for a human body to be in. That is the only thing that even resembles a sarcophagus that's ever been found in a pyramid. There is no writing, no hieroglyphs inside of those pyramids. They are not part of the rest of Egypt. You know, you got all the temples like the Temple of Karnak and all of that, Thebes and Memphis and all of those places, and they're just doused with hieroglyphs. On every surface you can find, there's writing. Different kings have written their little, you know, and they cut out places where old kings have said things and they put new stuff in its place you know all over the place except for the pyramids there are no hieroglyphics in the pyramids anywhere almost like they were built by different people well if you delve into that you'll find out that they were built by different people they may possibly even be pre-flood I don't know that to be certain but I know that they weren't built by the same people that inhabited Egypt then or the people that inhabit Egypt now, which are not Egyptian. If you go to Egypt now, you will not find an Egyptian. You'll find people that have lineages of places in that area, but they are not the people who were in Egypt, not the people that you see on the walls when you see all the hieroglyphs, they're different people. Those people may not even exist anymore, I don't know. They may be blended in with other cultures around the world, I don't know. Uh, that's a study in itself, the study of genealogies. And that, that would take a long time to, to splay out and to make sense of because people have been interbreeding for thousands of years. There's no telling where people are nowadays. Back then it was simple. There were several different types of people, and now we're all just kind of mixed together. So it's kind of hard to, you know, separate who's who and where they belong. But one day... Though that information will be available. You will be able to find out who and where, but not right now. It's just too complicated. So the next time we talk, we're going to get into Egyptology and uh, talk about the Sumerians and, and the uh, Anunnaki and the King's List, and we're going to get deep into that stuff. And uh, I find that to be vastly interesting. So I'm going to do another song and I'm going to get on out of here because it's my time. Wise men say Only fools run but I can't help falling in love with you. Shall I stay? Would it be a sin? Surely to the 
see Darling, so it goes Some things were meant to be Take my hand Take my whole life too and Elvis just for you. Peace out guys. Like, subscribe, share, and follow one of the links in the description below. PayPal.me slash Jake Johnson Band if you feel like supporting the guy. And also tell all your friends about us. Let's get this thing started, man. We got some we got some uh, territory to cover. So come hang out with us and we'll be here Monday, Wednesday, and Friday unless, you know, Lord willing and the creek don't rise, we'll be here. And uh we enjoy this, so let's keep going. You guys have a great night. I'll see you on Monday. I got some band practice to do tomorrow, so have a good one. <laughs>